Oh, I think what's made us very aware of our audience is a little bit the, what we discussed earlier, the fear of being fired. So that consciousness is always there. And I think partially being teachers also makes us aware of that. Podcast Junkies, episode 271. Welcome back. I'm your host, Harry Duran. Regular listeners obviously know that. New listeners, I'm speaking to you. Thank you so much. If you just discovered this show, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the one where we seek out interesting voices in podcasting and learn a little bit more about what makes them tick and uh, what inspired them to start their show or luminaries in the space and their thoughts on this great wave of podcasting. Last episode, I spoke to the wonderful Lauren Popish. She is the founder of The Wave Podcasting and host of the book Wine Club. Great conversation that is getting some good feedback on socials. Shout out to Pat Chung, who gave us a nice note on Twitter and said, Hi, Wave Podcasting. That's Lauren's Twitter handle. Thanks for sharing about adult onset public anxiety on the podcast. The exact same thing happened to me, which is weird because I used to do public speaking all the time. I'm somewhat glad that I'm not alone. Thanks so much, Pat. That's uh, really nice to hear that the episodes and the conversations are adding value. So I appreciate your feedback there. This week, we speak to Mealy and Tudisco. Interesting names. They're the hosts of Unprofessional Development. It's a show that showcases real teachers telling real stories and sharing their wisdom, insights, and experience from the world of education. In this episode you're about to hear, they share the story of how they met, what inspired them to bring their unique perspective on education to a podcast, and talk about their real-life stories from the classroom while reflecting on their growth as podcast hosts. They discuss how the pandemic has affected their podcast, and they share the story of how they were able to get an interview with a very, very well-known name in the entertainment industry. And I won't share with you who it is, but you'll definitely recognize them. So listen out for that. Full show notes available at podcastjunkies.com forward slash 271. And don't forget, ratings and reviews are always appreciated. If this show is adding value for you, if this episode is adding value for you, by all means, I've been thinking very closely about Adam Curry and Dave Jones, what they're doing on Podcasting 2.0, and they talk about the value for value model. So essentially, you can reward us with your time, your talent, or your treasure, and it's a, it's a phrase that I've heard uh, one of my clients, Sylvia Ma, mention on her, the She Podcast show. So I'm adopting that model here as well. So reviews are always appreciated. Rate this podcast.com forward slash podcast junkies. We also have a Patreon page. And if you are interested in learning more about uh, the cutting edge apps available where you can directly contribute with crypto, then check out newpodcastapps.com if you're feeling adventurous. Switching things up a bit, I want to take time out to really, really thank the folks that sponsor this podcast. It's not something I take lightly. It's something I really value and appreciate. And I want you to know as a listener that the support is important to all podcasters who have sponsors. We really appreciate it when they go out of their way to support the show. So we've got two ad reads coming up. And then after that, uninterrupted, I'll present the full interview with Mealy and Tedisco. So first is uh, longtime sponsor Focusrite and new sponsor Patreon. And thank you for listening to the ad read. You put everything into making your podcast perfect. You love it. Your fans love it, but you're getting bigger. Hopefully. <laughs> more and more people are listening every day. And now you're worried about losing some of the magic that makes your show you. That happens a lot. So the question is, how do you keep creative control? What's wonderful about Patreon is that the people power your podcast, not networks, not advertisers. So you can turn down those crappy ad deals that you know your listeners are just skipping over. Not like this one. Or say no to networks that care more about putting money in their own pockets rather than paying you. Your biggest fans get access to exclusive shows, ad-free episodes, bonus content, anything you can dream up as a perk. And in return, you'll get a steady, predictable paycheck from the people who love what you're doing. Sound good? Build and grow your podcast your way with your listeners. Start your Patreon today at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Also special thanks to our longtime sponsor, Focusrite. This episode is brought to you by Focusrite and specifically the Scarlet 2i2 sound card, one of my favorite go-to sound cards, something I use for each and every podcast recording. The 3G line is a go-to for all new podcasters. 
Find out more at podcastjunkies.com forward slash focus right, and the link will be in the show notes as well. Okay, thank you so much for being patient with me and my wonderful sponsors. Let's get into this conversation with Meline Tedisco, and don't forget to listen out to the end of the episode where I reveal this week's retention hashtag. So, Meline and Tedisco, hosts of Unprofessional Development, thank you for joining me on Podcast Junkies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, who <laughs> the way the just social works and the way I am just spontaneously deciding when people would make for a good guest based on a Twitter feed or social post. It's no surprise that we ended up here. So who was I chatting with on social? Amelia, right? Yeah, yeah. Me. Yeah, Tedisco doesn't I do the social. I take no responsibility <laughs> no. for our Twitter. <laughs> no, he's... We have a very nice split of duties. He does all the editing and publishing and all the, the tech stuff, and I do all the social and booking guests and that type of stuff, which works out really nicely. So for the benefit of the listener, do you want to, Millie, you want to just share the exchange you had and how we ended up here? Okay. Well, well, see, I'm a listener of yours. I listen to podcasts. I don't, I don't say like every episode, but I listen to it a lot. I believe I discovered you through Dave Jackson, um, School of Podcasting. Were you? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you were on there or he mentioned you or whatever. I was on there. He's been on here. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I first got into Very cool. having our podcast, that was one of the first podcasts that I found because I wanted to find podcasts about podcasts. So then he kind of turned me on to you and to Elsie and Jess from She Podcast. And there's another guy that's vaguely tied in. I don't know if you know him, the Angry Ginger. He does something. Oh, yeah, Jason. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Jason and I are friends and he's been on as well. So yeah, it's a small community that appears bigger. But uh, once you start to get to know the, the names, you start to see them in the in the same threads and, as well. Right. So I found I kind of found all of you guys and have associated with you. So I was kind of, I don't know, stalking you and hoping that you would realize that I was there. So I would just like stuff and reply to your posts. And Well, that's how it works. It is. And without trying to, and we know how this goes, there's a fine line between being friendly and then where you can come across as needy. And I've become more sensitive to this as our podcast has grown. Like in the beginning, no one knows who you are. And then you reach a point where, like, you're getting random DMs. Hey, do you want to have me as a guest? And it's like, well, I might have if you didn't ask. <laughs> What's funny is there's companies that know how to scrape RSS feeds. There, there's an email tag, right, in RSS feeds. And so anyone that starts a new show, and, and we have a production company, and we launch shows, and so, sometimes we put in one of our company emails, and I'll see the emails come through like clockwork, like the episode is live in Apple, and just like, boom, like these bots like kick in, and like, hey, would you like to help with your editing from like a, a company in in like India or something like that, <laughs> like, or we'll promote your show to the top of the charts, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. So to just go, what's uh, the... I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to talk about you and around you. That's cool. I'd be more comfortable with that, I think. What's the story behind how you and Millie met? Oh, well, so um, professional development is, you know, focused on teachers and teachers telling their stories and us getting back to what brings us to education, the funny things about education we love. And Millie and I worked together at the same school, and he knew me through it. a couple of students had sort of suggested us to each other. Students like, you remind me of this teacher, or they'll just accidentally call you by somebody else's name all the time. You look like you need a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we went up meeting up and he had this idea for this podcast. And I'm like, that sounds crazy. Try it. So we started doing it. And since the first episode, we've just been having a blast. And I don't know how he keeps getting guests, but we keep getting them. And then I just show up and then edit and chop out all the things they don't want. To Disco, do you, were you listening to podcasts at the time? Or was there some, did you have them on regular rotation? Not really. I mean, I had a few that I really liked, but none that I was, you know, really consistently closely following. I like some stand-up comedians, so I'll follow them. But no, podcasts are kind of out of my periphery. But as a teacher, I do like hearing my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> that's rare. Most podcasters don't. So that's definitely a drive. So, Amelia, where did the idea come from the show? Had you heard something similar or did you have a, some, a format in mind? Yeah. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. I think I mentioned whether in our interaction on Twitter or whatever, I, I go back all the way to as a kid. I'm like I'm like uh, 52 years old, and I listened to like talk radio when I was a kid. You know, like as I guess as, a, as an adolescent, 
And then I got into podcasts, and some of them were fantasy football. Some of them were some preaching podcasts I would listen to. And then I kind of grew into the the big ones with the This American Life and Freakonomics were some of the, my early ones that I would listen to. And then so I went looking. I'm like, oh, there's got to be some teacher podcasts. I've been, I'm a teacher. I'm looking for teacher podcasts. And there was one pretty good one. It was Jen Gonzalez. Hers is called uh, Cult of Pedagogy, which pedagogy is study of teaching. And she ripped it from Cult of Personality, the, the Living Color song. And so I listened to hers and hers was pretty good. And I liked it a lot. And then I sort of listened to some others and they were very academic and very just, I don't want to say boring, but they were more like reading it. Go ahead. Please. Educational podcasts do for podcasts what educational games do for games. No, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of one called From Bell to Bell? No, I haven't heard From Bell to Bell. No, I might look that one up. They haven't continued with it, but actually Sarah Candela, who is the host of that, she, I think she did 17 episodes, but Sarah used to work with me at full cast, our production company. And so it was, and she had just gotten started in podcasting and it's been exciting. She's now with another company that's an education company and helping them produce shows. So I sort of through her had heard about, you know, podcasts in the education space. So I'm curious, you know, having this experience in podcast, Millie, would you guys be willing to reenact that first conversation? <laughs> How Mealy and to this go, like having the conversation about like, hey, should we start a podcast or got a podcast idea? And this is the part where I'll, I'll, I'll mix in that back in time music as well, that back in time sound effects. <laughs> Everything's getting wavy. Well, there were two because there was a time I was just walking like on our campus and Mealy was walking the opposite way and he just stopped me. He's like, I got to ask you, right? There was that one. Oh, yes, yes. So I've been thinking about having a podcast, doing a podcast, and I would like you to be part of it. I think we would make good partners. I know that based on what George and Georgette have uh, told me, that you seem like we have a lot of things in common, and it would be a good fit for us to do the podcast. And at this point in my head, I'm thinking like, yeah, okay, uh uh-huh, sure. (laughs) And I was like, oh, yeah, no. This wasn't your first conversation, right? Yeah, that sounds cool. And then Millie told me the name and I was kind of hooked. <laughs> yes. So we had different names and I said, how about, I said, I'm thinking of names. I want to call it unprofessional development. Which for teachers, professional development is our bane. <laughs> it's, it's some of the most yes. painful times. Yeah. I don't know if you, how much you know about this. I was going to say it happens in a lot of other professions, I'm sure as well. But we have, what would you say? Maybe anywhere from 10 to 15 Days of the year, I don't know how many hours would you say to disco we do professional development of the year? Oh, man. It varies from year to year. Yeah, I'd say probably about 10. I mean, and then there are the, it's like sometimes just the whole days that are professional development. Right. So sometimes we have a whole eight hour day. And all the days before school, they're all professional development. Right. Sometimes it's, yeah, there's, there's days before the, the students report in the beginning of school. And then there's after school days. And sometimes there's days where the kids are home and we're in school. And a lot of it is really redundant or very general to where you're sitting there and you're like, okay, this applies to the English teachers, but I teach math. Or why is the gym teacher getting the same training that the AP bio teacher is getting? And they, they, there's, it's Or the teacher has been here 50 years. Why are they sitting next to the teacher who's been here too when they need very different things? And it's horrible. And also for people outside of education, teachers are horrible students. Uh, we are not a good audience. And we usually have just way too much on our mind. Like teachers just bring stacks of papers to be working on because we'd like to get work done. And we got to be in this stupid training. Right. So unprofessional development is the opposite of that. And then the other concept that I really thought. So some of the best things that as teachers we've learned, I'm going into my 11th year to this degree, we're like eight, nine years um, teaching. Yeah, it's be year nine for me. And is the conversations that we have in the hallway between classes where you're like, oh my goodness, the kids, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or you're in the workroom, you know, making copies or grading papers and you go, hey, what do you do when your students struggle with X? Or how do you handle, how would you present this? And there's actually really, really good conversations where you learn about your craft and you learn how to be a teacher that happen in all these casual not organized, not structured conversations that really, really give you actual actionable things that you can use to make you a better teacher. And so that was also the concept that this is what we'll do. 
We'll try and get teachers. We'll tell goofy stories because it's always fun to hear just like the nonsense that happens in the classroom. And, and you know, even if you weren't a teacher, you can, when you think back to high school or middle school, the crazy stuff that would happen that you can't believe happened inside of classroom. And then how does that apply or how can we use that or what can we use to learn from that? What does that mean? Yeah, it's interesting because when you think back of moments of your childhood or your education, I do remember being in grade school and then like I would walk in the hallways past the, the teacher's room <laughs> and you just like get that peek inside and you're like, I wonder what those adults are talking about. It's probably like really important stuff. And How much we hate the students half the time <laughs> <laughs> or how much and how much we hate the principal the other half of the time. <laughs> <laughs> giving ourselves solid advice like how do you keep from sobbing yes. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah crying into the crook of your elbow so that no one hears you right into our lattes by the way it's okay if you take all those papers that you collected and throw them in the trash the kids will never remember there's only one kid that will know you didn't grade them and you just like and you just kind of put him off until he forgets about it so yeah just say look over there and run out the room and probably serve itself not that that's ever happened. No. 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 How would you describe your audience, or did you have that in mind as you were thinking about the show? Because obviously, everyone does it differently. Some people start recording and just like, well, we're just winging it. Some people spend thousands of dollars on gear and, and then try to figure out what they're going to talk about. So I'm wondering where you were on that range, and if you had an idea, like, who the audience might be for the show. That kind of connects to our second conversation. We had that conversation we went out for lunch. We talked about those things. And how'd that conversation go? Oh, like we went out for lunch and we were just kind of talking like nuts and bolts, like what it would be like, what are we going to talk about? Because originally the idea was it would be the two of us and we quickly realized that will get boring quick. So Mealy started pulling in other people that he knew just like who worked around us. And then he started getting to that internet there and pulling in people from all outside. But I feel like we kind of approached it from different places, which I liked because you bring a different perspective. Uh, Mealy focuses a lot on like the teachers. What are teachers going to gain from this? What can we learn? What can we share? I think about it, you know, from like outside of the educational perspective, if you weren't a teacher, could you still listen to this and be entertained? And that's kind of like what I like to do. So when teachers come in, they start talking like really deep into to the jargon of pedagogy. I kind of, I try to take steps back and like explain it for a layman to, to hear. So that's true. Yeah, it's really important and something we've talked about as well. And I think people sometimes forget podcasters, especially when there's two people. And even sometimes a conversation like this, we could get sort of like lost in the fact that we're having a, a fun time. But there is this, uh, I was chatting with someone about this the other day. We have to be conscious that there's someone listening to this episode. They're not listening now, which is a bit like time shifty, weird, because we, so we have to like, be conscious of that. So sometimes if a guest has a specific jargon or, or something that I, I'm not even clear about, I'm always conscious that there's, I'm sort of the proxy for my listeners. And if I'm excited about a topic or a guest, I feel like that, that translates into their experience. And so I'm wondering how that was for you, if, if you were aware of that in the beginning, and as, if you've gotten better with that as the show's progressed. Oh, I think what's made us very aware of our audience is a little bit the what we discussed earlier the fear of being fired so that consciousness is always there and i think partially being teachers also makes us aware of that the one thing we knew i just realized in tedisco maybe we need to come up with some goofy like little sound tedisco face palms a lot at corny cheesy i tell a lot of dad jokes and tedisco face palms and that doesn't translate very well to audio <laughs> It's just like an awkward pause. No, but here's what's great about it, though, because you'll tell a joke and then you'll laugh at it <laughs> and there'll just be silence afterwards. And I think that really translates the scenario. Well, I think you need the, the, the what's the sad horn sound? Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I need a soundboard. We'll just be DJs. So to just go like when you think about the planning that goes into e each episode, is that getting better over time as well? Or are you still sort of flying by the seat of your pants? Mealy does all the planning. So, <laughs> you know, I usually just kind of show up. Mealy does like all the front work. I'll just do the back work. So a lot of times like and it's interesting because and I'll come in from, you know, a place of just curiosity. I don't know who we're meeting. Like, Mealy might have been talking to them on Twitter for months, but I just meet people for the first time. So I, I want to get to know all about them. And, you know, genuinely, the things they share with us will just blow my mind. And then afterwards, I'll just clean it all up in the audio. But 
Yeah, I kind of like that approach. I, I like walking in not knowing who I'm going to talk to because I also then like I never feel intimidated. And they'll be like, oh, this is an edgy celebrity. And I'll be like, cool. They seem nice. <laughs> Neely, when you think about planning for the show and bringing guests on, also cognizant of the, like the experience we're having here, there's three people in this conversation. And so as a host, you know, you have to really figure out how to manage that. And in the beginning, I would just start talking and then people would just be talking over each other. And I'm, and I'm like thinking already about post-production. I'm like, this is going to be like a nightmare to edit. So <laughs> obviously by default, you have two hosts on your show. Do you have like multiple guests, like uh, more than one guest on a show or? So most times it's just one guest Okay. and we do do it over zoom. So that does allow for at least like the, and you can put your finger up or, and like you've got the video going on here. So it allows for that, that body language. You'll see that someone self interruption, you go, Oh, Hey, it looks like you had something you wanted to share. Right. All those types <laughs> of things right there. All the visual cues. But yeah. we have had multiple where we've got like two guests one of the ones that was like more notable, we had these guys on, they're called Two Dope Teachers. And so that was a really, really good time. But there was a lot of probably like talking over, but it was a lot of laughing. And then recently we hosted this crazy event. It was called Edupodlooza, where we did eight hours of live streaming. And we had a dozen people at the most we had, because that was the most that, what's the name of the the thing that we use to disco stream yard stream yard yeah so we could only have 10 on but yeah the platform yeah but we had 10 people on it at, at multiple times to where we were doing kind of like a round table conversation that was probably pretty wild was that the free plan before you get charged more past the 10 we did no we had to pay to get the, the 10 i think oh, okay we had to pay no we paid because we wanted eight straight hours where we didn't have to like stop and start. So something in there, I can't remember how much it was. No, you couldn't get more than 10. They didn't have that. Oh, okay. You know, no, I was just, I was thinking it was, it was almost like a uh, musical chair. <laughs> oh, we did. Well, <laughs> You'd have 10 people on and you're like, uh, there, there were a couple of times where like one segment would be ending and another one would be beginning. Cause we had segments last about an hour. Amelia would be like, all right guys, you have to leave now. Right. Just knock them out of the stream. Be like halfway there. Right. And that's why we had, we got like Tedisco's buddy, to be our quote unquote producer. So his job technically was to like make sure that that was happening, but it ended up being StreamYard ended up being much more. I think we, he was helpful, but I think we could have done it without him because it's very user friendly, but I thought we might be so caught up in the conversation that we would have issues with people coming and going, but it really went much better. It was, it streamed very well. So yeah, I liked it. And now I'm editing all of that now. Yes. Yeah. yeah editing. <laughs> Have you noticed that, and maybe to just go from an editing perspective, you get to hear yourselves. You're, I think, at episode 79. Are you noticing the growth or the, the maturity in terms of the show? How you both interact with each other? How you, like, are you asking better questions? What have you noticed over time? I think, honestly, we had just really good, like, chemistry on it from the get go. Like, we rarely ever have, like, long, awkward pauses. I don't think ever. Let's be honest. Fuck. No. And so, but I will say, yeah, we cut down sort of the, the ums and the ahs. And I say um way too much. I hate it. You're really done. And you've gotten a, a lot better since, since the beginning. But I, I have too. Okay. Well, thank you. But, I mean, you know, we joke about it. We, we know what our imperfections are. And honestly, it's more of, like, for me, just getting to know what we're like like oh, okay so i know that usually i'll start mumbling at the end of a joke near a punchline so i gotta you know cut up or you know we'll be talking about something and i'll just think like this isn't gonna make it i gotta cut all this out <laughs> but i mean i think we are growing i think you know we're getting better at talking to guests and, and getting those better stories and i think we're now at the point we're focusing on just making sure our guests all feel very comfortable for a lot of the teachers, it's their first time ever on a podcast. So like they'll be on Twitter, but you know, they, they teach full time. This isn't what they do. So they usually get a little nervous and we joke around with them right from the get go and try to make everybody feel comfy. Yeah, Amelia, just curious, like your perspective, how you feel as a host, like you've grown since the beginning. I was going to say, first of all, I think I agree with Tedisco and listening to, like I said, Dave Jackson and other podcasts and learning about that, there's all this whole there's, in general, your first episode is supposed to suck, right? You're supposed to be, like, kind of lost and whatever. And so my anticipation was that our first episode was going to be really weird. And we had almost no agenda other than it was going to be getting... 
us getting to know each other because we weren't really like close. We knew each other peripherally and we knew good things. I'll, well, I'll just throw this one out there. I'd seen them in professional developments. <laughs> this one is one of the things that I knew Tedisco was part of my family. So I, I'm seeing him in a, in the teacher workroom one time. And I think he stole this joke or maybe someone stole it from him. I don't know, but he goes, so one of my students said, when am I going to use this in real life? And I said, you won't, but be quiet. The smart kids will. <laughs> Sounds like a, a Japanese cone or something. Like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that is so great. You know, because I mean, there are kids like, when am I going to use this in real life? And, and without being sounding mean and condescending and terrible, because we love our students, but there are kids that you're like, no, you're not going to college. You're going to be like working at McDonald's. And, but the kid sitting next to you, he's going to need this when he goes study accounting or business or whatever it is that he studies. But, and let's also be honest, some of the stuff we teach is dumb and you don't need it. Yes. And that's true. I got to teach gerunds and participles. Do you need it? No, no, no. no. I, I've got to teach. Do you know how to rationalize a denominator? I can teach you that, but you'll never do it. What if somebody stops you at gunpoint and tells you to diagram this sentence? <laughs> Calculate isosceles triangle. Exactly. <laughs> so, but anyway, I knew a little bit about him like that. So I knew it'd be, I knew I would like him and also the, the students, like there were these two students that I really had a good connection with who just thought he was just the best. So we go in and we recorded in this odd spot that we'd had, we had found to record, which is a whole other story. But yeah, that sounds like there's a story there. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some. We teach at a, at a school that's over 50 years old, and there are some buildings that have like these little, little catacombs where you like it, it's, you go through the teacher's room and you go into this other room, and then there's another room there, and there's no, there's nothing, it's like storage, but it's like all these. There's a troll who asks riddles, it's a whole thing. Yes, it's, it's like these weird caves and like doors and hallways that, that go nowhere. It sounds like a Goonies sequel. Yes, it really <laughs> was. So, so we sit down there. We take, I don't know, what, 15 minutes to figure out how, to, how the recording software and the microphone works. and then But then we start talking. With the one microphone that we were kind of just held between the two of yes. us. And then we start, and, you know, you're not picking up. You're not picking up. Okay, let's play. Let's listen to it back. Anyway, but then we actually start the real recording. And, like, we are just vibing and we're riffing and we're taking each other down these little fun paths and we're, we're cracking each other up. And then we get done, and like I look at him and I go, "That didn't suck. That was actually like really good." <laughs> and Tedisco's like, "I know. Like we both thought it was going to be like awkward and and challenging, and we both walked out of there. It's almost I don't want to like I don't think we're some kind of master podcasters, but it's kind of like two people that have never played guitar together, and all of a sudden you're like, oh." Wow, that we're vibing here. You're following my or guitar and drums. Really, I'm actually picking up what you're putting down without having to like. There was some kind of nonverbal cues that somehow just that just worked, and we're like, oh, this. And I, I knew at that point that this is going to be a lot of fun. It was, it was just really exciting. And I'll say, every time I edit, I wind up cracking up at least once. Like every time I edit, it's fun. So it's interesting because you never know the dynamic, and a lot of times. It's challenging when you have a show that's dependent on two hosts because that's the nature of the show. And there's obviously stories of like two f friends starting a podcast <laughs> and a year later, like something happens and they have to awkwardly figure out like do they end the show? Do they bring on another co-host who's not as bought in and or do they just bail on, on it? So I'm wondering what it's done to your friendship. Yeah. One day when Tedisco takes me to court for the million, that's when it'll it'll blow up. So that's, that's right. So once you realize all the podcast gold, it'll be the social network all I've over seen, again. Exactly. <laughs> Who's Zuckerberg in the? In the <laughs> I think we all have a little Zuckerberg in us. Honestly, it, it's kind of like for me, it's almost like when you set up a workout plan with someone because it doesn't. Feel, it's not like work, you know. It's like this is our fun hobby, and you know, we say and we talk to other podcasters. We always say the moment it's not fun, we'll stop. But I mean. It's nice to have the accountability piece, because if it were just me alone in a room, I'd be like, man, I'm good. And like I'd record two episodes, then just stop. But, you know, we hold our, ourselves accountable and like all with positivity, just knowing there's somebody else there. I think it, it always helps me. I don't, I don't know about you, Mealy. Oh, yeah. How many years has it been? This is year two, I want to say. Year two. So the idea was May of 19... 
first time we sat down and recorded was September of 19. We recorded about five episodes by Christmas time and then released the first or second week in January of 2020. And I was going to say, yes, I'm of the, I'm a little more, I think, say, driven to make it happen than to disco about half of the time. But then there's definitely some times where I'm like, oh, okay, I want to take a break or I want to just, I, I'm just, but I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I said I was going to do it. You know, we're going to do it. We're, you know, there's, we have a schedule where every other week we record two episodes so that we have that. So we consistently release episode a week. And there'll be times where we'll get some, we'll do some uh, binge recording or get some buffer episodes so we can take a break, whether it, we take two breaks, at least we have. We'll probably continue to do this. The first month of school for teachers is kind of crazy, so it's nice to have that time off that we don't have to record. And then the Thanksgiving to Christmas time with schedules and not to mention scheduling guests just becomes annoying. So, so we have that time off, so we try and build up a little extra in the summertime. And then having that eight-hour stream thing. Oh, yeah, and there was also a pandemic going on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which made it easier. How did that impact? production people had more free time and knew how to use zoom so yeah i think it really did it made it actually easier because our first remote guest and it allowed me to be on twitter and really grow the my twitter account because i didn't really have one prior to that but i would say the biggest way because we got to throw the name drop in here right to disco oh yeah Millie says he drops this name like a juggler without thumbs i do i do <laughs> so i think it was the pandemic was instrumental in us getting Tony Danza on the podcast because he had nothing else to do. And he, he did actually say that. Let's hear that story because that's fascinating. And, and he, did, uh, he did say that. He's like, he's like, what else am I doing? I got nothing else to do. <laughs> okay. So start at the beginning. Like, sure. What the idea or how did you guys cross paths? I did the specifics about that. So, way, way long time ago, I'm a huge Oprah Winfrey fan. I saw. Tony Danza on Oprah Winfrey, okay, back when she still had her show every day. And he mentioned that he was teaching, and this is when he was 60 years old, so I don't know, this is, this is however many years ago. And so he kind of, you know, this is post, who's the boss? So he, he had gone to college for teaching, and he, and he had always thought about it, and now that his kind of career at that point was kind of in a lull as well, he said, hey, I'm going to go back into teaching. So I see him on Oprah. And that, that just stuck somewhere in my memory banks. So we're just kind of going, who can we have on? You know, we started off with just teachers that we thought were entertaining that we worked with. And then kind of looking at people that we knew maybe through social media. And then I said, oh, what about Tony Danza? And so I mentioned it to this guy. I said, he was a teacher. We should get him on the podcast. To this guy's like, yeah, sure. We'll get Tony. Yeah, we'll get the Tony Danza on, right? Right after we have, like, you know, the Queen of England and... Alyssa Milano. <laughs> right, you know? Yeah. Well, after Tony Danza, it's Oprah. And then after Oprah, it's Barack and Michelle, right? Right. Ed, no, if you stay in the teacher genre, you'd have to go Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. Jack Black. And then you do, you have to do Edward James almost. Yes, you we can do him. <laughs> yes, yes. You should have that as, like, a celebrity teacher segment and once every quarter or just... You just Hugh Jackman go, taught Jim. Hugh him. Jackman, yeah. He's not doing Wolverine <laughs> anymore. Come on. Right. You should have those big swings, like, and just, you never know. Like, and, and it's funny because a lot of people have put out intentions on this show, a couple of people, and they've happened. So this is the place where podcast miracles happen, by the way. So if whoever you go to. Danica McKellar is the one where, is the one I'm currently, ch Danica McKellar and LeVar Burton are ones that I am, as the kids say, efforting on a big yeah. thing. So, so if you have any connections to either one of those, Harry, or <laughs> Podcast Junkie well, listeners, now it's out there. And when help us out. Yeah. Danica McKellar has a lot of math books. Friends of friends of friends of cousins of, of sisters of brothers of uncles of Dana McKellar. Like. Yeah. That's what I did with Tony Danza. So he taught in the area where I grew up. I grew up just outside Philly and he taught at a school in Philly so I put on Facebook, I said, hey, how many degrees of separation am I from Tony Danza? One of my friends said, my friend taught at the school where he taught. And I said, cool, put me in contact with her. She didn't actually put me in touch with her, but that her put me in touch with this other lady whose name is Peggy. And then I talked to Peggy because that, that other lady said, I taught at the school, but it was a big school. I didn't really know him. 
So I, I didn't really come across. I was in the same workspace, but didn't really know. So she puts me in touch with Peggy. Peggy was a guidance counselor. She says, you know, I know Tony. I was like in charge of making sure that his kids didn't flunk and that he was actually doing a good job teaching. So they gave me like a special assignment because he only taught like one class of 30 kids. He didn't have like a full schedule. He taught English to, I think, juniors. And for the record, for people who don't know, while he was doing this, he was filming a show of him teaching. Yes. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so it was a reality show. Like it, it was Teach Tony Danza. So like that was the concern of the school. They're like, we want everybody to know this isn't just a publicity stunt. Like the kids are actually learning. Right. Right. So the kind of uh, so she was like the safety net for that. And so I I got in touch with her through the you know, so there's like now three people I've gone through. We talked on we emailed and I said, Hey, can I talk to you on the phone? She called me and so we're like I talked to her for like an hour just online. I was like, she, and at some point she's coming on the podcast. We keep having scheduling issues with that. But she's, long story short, she's like, I don't know Tony well enough to ask him that kind of question. But Joe is like his best friend when he was here. And he talks about Joe in the book and on the TV show and all that kind of stuff. So she gives me Joe's email. I email Joe. I said, hey, I'm a podcaster. And I think this is what hooked him, is that I respected his relationship with Tony. And I said, I understand that if you're friends with Tony Danza, you can only ask so many favors of him a day or a year. You don't want to be like, hey, can you sing at my kid's bar mitzvah? Can you, you know, we're having a fundraiser, you know, can you? No, you, you ask him, you know, when you when it's important. I said, but hey, we talk about teachers. It's called unprofessional development. Teachers... The name honestly really does, when I tell teachers, they all smile and they all like it because of just their hate for professional development, the real thing. And so he says, i got no problem. I'll ask him for you. And then about a week later, he sends the email back. He says, Tony says he can do it. So then there was, you know, kind of communication. It was really weird. One of the weirder things to me that just is funny, and I guess it shows Tony's age more than anything else, is that Tony still uses an AOL email. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother does too. It's funny. So Tedisco, as this is happening, is are you getting updates or, or how are you finding out? Oh, yeah. So consistently. So Mila's like, oh, I got someone from the school. I'm like, uh-huh. They're like, he didn't, no, she didn't really know him. But like this other person, I was like, okay, this all took place over the course of months. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is a process. Yeah. So we finally got. I'm screenshotting him every email and thing and going, look, they were close. You know, he says, yes. Okay. And then, like, from the time he said yes, he gave me Tony's email. It was still, like, another, like, couple of weeks for, for, with Tony re reply, not replying. And you're like, okay, do I bug him and send another email? And it was all this, ah, so, much, so many nerves. It's, what's interesting there is that what people don't realize, unless we're, you're doing something like a podcast where you, it's important that you build that network of connections. And I'm sure both of you have experiences about this of like knowing someone or a relationship with someone from like five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe even 20, 30 years ago. And it starts to like play out in weird ways that obviously at the time you would not have known how that relationship could have like, you both could have been benefiting from that. And I think that conversation you had with that gatekeeper is important because I, I think people underestimate the influence the, and the power of gatekeepers you know people always try to get to like the name and then they don't realize like if you want to get to the name you probably need to have an in with someone who's in their like trusted circle and i think people forget that and i think that's just it's just the golden rule like treat others like you want to be treated because you just never know especially now in this like multi-connected world and i've seen it like on linkedin i'm like and you asked the question me you asked like who can connect me to tony danza and you know you just i think it's just it just it's a something to keep note of and for the listener just to be conscious of to have those big names in mind for your show and everyone knows who the tony danza is for their show <laughs> but i think the way you went about it was really respectful in terms of like his time and understanding the, the value he was going to bring to your audience. And, and connecting through somebody else also helps eliminate the possibility that we're just bots and we don't know what we're doing. You know, we always talked before about how we all get random messages on Twitter of people trying to get on our podcast. We're like, are you human? <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually want to, you know, spend a little bit of time on what you guys do and, and thanking you for, for your, your service and, and being teachers. And, and I know it, it's a challenging profession and, and it's not a lot of, uh, gratitude sh shown towards the teaching profession and so I, I just want to thank you guys for being there on the front lines and educating our youth and, and not all make it no, it's not for <laughs> and, everybody and, and, but the ones that do it 
Yeah. And I think you probably have personal stories of students that you've seen over the years that you've taken a liking to, or you just seen that, you know, there's students that stand out and they're just like, they care about it more. And I imagine as a teacher, you get laser focused when you see someone like that, who has that shine, who has that, that aptitude, that, that ability to, that you can see almost before they can, like what they, they can become with the, just a little bit of guidance. Yeah. I had a kid, I had her as a freshman. I saw her last year. She was graduating. And she's going to Georgia Tech and she's going to be studying like aerospace engineering, right? And like, I remember her being in my class and I'm like, I said, you realize you're the smartest kid in the room. She's like, really? I'm like, no, no, you're like way smarter than everybody in here. You're way smarter than me. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, I said, I know stuff you don't know because I'm older <laughs> and I've seen it and you haven't seen it yet. I said, but you are the smartest kid here. And I said, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to tell it to you more than once, but keep hearing this. And I, you've probably heard it before, Harry. I said, if you're the smartest person in the room, do you know the second half of that sentence? You're in the wrong room. You're in the wrong room. You're in the wrong room. You know, I said, and I don't know when you're going to get in the right room, and how long it's going to take you to get in the right room, because I can't even get you to another room right now. You're literally the youngest kid in here. <laughs> I said, and you're learning stuff in like... A third of the time that it takes me to teach everybody else. You could literally take this year's course and next year's course. If I could somehow manipulate the system and there's, and I was at a, at a school that was a little more flexible, I could teach you two years of math in one year easily. But I'm only going to teach you one and then you just do whatever else you want to do because I've got like 25 other kids here. But, but yeah, and there's so many kids like that. So, uh, to Disco, so just following up on that and to Disco gets the benefit of a bit more time to think about this question. So, cause I'm going to ask Mealy first. So. Given that story, given the experiences you've had so far, you know, why do you do what you do and why is it important to you? Because I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> With my personality, nothing else is going to work. <laughs> but why? I mean, I'm going to dig deeper on that. Like, why is this, you know, important for you? And, and or what did you see at the time? I'm just curious about your mindset and, and what, what keeps you going. I mean, in terms of teaching, is, are you okay if I go first mailing? Yeah. I mean, in terms of teaching, like, I love the curriculum that brought me there, but it's always the connections with people. I mean, teaching, well, if you're good at it, teaching is about relationships and building relationships with people who, who are struggling. I mean, think about where you were in middle school and high school. It was probably the worst version of yourself there, there ever was. That's what everybody's struggling. And I really like being there for people. Um, I like making connections with all the weirdos and the losers. And all the kids struggling and helping them realize that there is so much more to the world than just school. And it's okay to say school sucks. But, you know, also realizing like why we're here and what education's for and what we really need to be learning. So those connections are always going to keep me going. I mean, I don't ever want to stop teaching. I love it too much. That's awesome. Really? Yeah, I was going to say me as well. One of the big things, I, I mentioned this actually, I think on the first episode, a huge thing for teachers is when kids have that aha moment. So, and what we try to do more and more as teachers is rather than just, you know, write something on the board and then you write it down and just, you know, regurgitate whatever I'm just spewing to your head, rather than guide them and help them to have that aha moment. And when that kid goes, oh, oh, and they get it, it, I call it teacher crack because it gives you this unbelievable high. You're just, you feel so powerful for having like lit that fire and now it's blazing in front of you. But also literally like five minutes later, you need it again and you need to like do it with another kid. And so I really love doing it. And speaking of those kids, the weirdos, I do love the weirdos. The, the, the two kids that connected us, they were, they're some of the weirder kids that I've ever taught. <laughs> You know, one is like, you know, I still keep up with them. Yeah. So, and then there are those kids, like there's this young lady, she's now she's going to college. And I remember having this conversation in the hallway, the, the conversations you're not supposed to have, but since we're like unprofessional that, that I have, and she came over and she, she was asking me something and da, 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 and I, she goes back in the classroom and, and get started working and we were still out in the hall before the, the bell rang and I turned to a fellow teacher and I go, so that kid right there, she's either going to be a meth addict with like three kids by the time she's 20 or she's going to run an entire building 
of people and she will be like whether like she'll either be like the ceo like she can be either one like it's and you can see this when you talk to her and she like had danger signs for addiction and promiscuity and she also had like a brilliance and a personality the ability to create community in the classroom and connect other kids to other kids she was a natural born leader she had natural intelligence she could get stuff but she had a whole lot of like you know f you school and, and f this all the way in her as well and so it was and she's now she's in community college i still in fact i probably need to send another text to her she's doing well and she seems to be doing well she kind of got her life turned around in, in the next year and a half i actually moved up a level in what i taught and i had her for a second time and that was really really cool and so knowing that you have a, a chance to like I don't want to say rescue because it's them. They make the decisions and they do the things. And I'm, I don't want to be like the, you know, get the whole savior complex because your goal is to like, you know, shine the light and go, Hey, that's the direction. You're not, don't follow me. Just look over here and, or look in the mirror and see how awesome you are. You may not realize how awesome you are until I tell you, but I'm going to tell you you're awesome every day until you get it. And so sometimes that's that. I fully agree with that. And I think, honestly, a big part of, of what teachers do is it's not like exactly telling them anything new, like, hey, be nice to people. Like, that's not news, right? But sometimes kids just need a reason to doubt it, right? They just need a reason to think, oh, how do my actions affect other people? And we all kind of need that sometimes, right? We all kind of need to. And that's one of the things that really helps with our podcast. That, like every time we sit down, we get to take a step back and reflect on why are we still doing this? Because teaching is also a really exhausting job and it's really easy to get jaded. And we all had those teachers too, and they were awful. So, you know, sometimes people just need a reason to, to think about it. Yeah, and I think and everyone can relate to being in a classroom and having that one teacher that just sort of made a difference for you or that you, you realize that they really took their job seriously, or at least it was perceived that, that way when you were that age. But you know, they, they gave you that extra assistance with a problem or they explained things in a way that was fun and entertaining. And you just, you know, I remember my fourth grade teacher is Mrs. Finkelstein. Like <laughs> my physics teacher is Mr. Tedesco. Like he made physics fun and I actually learned some stuff. So, you know, it's just interesting those moments that pop out for you. And, and so I think it's nice when you get them because they sort of reaffirm that you're on the path. And I'm sure you have them at, at, at different times across your career. But uh, again, yeah, because Muley and I are not those teachers, but we have them on our podcast. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, yeah, I can't even imagine what the, the two kids who introduced you must be thinking. They're like, wow, you guys actually ran with this and this is still going. This is wild. Do they know? One, I don't, I don't think one of them knows. Does They know. They know? Okay. <laughs> they don't yeah, listen to it. Yeah. Well, for your 100th anniversary, you should bring them on and just... You guys should all shoot the shit for like a day. We should. That would be fun. We should get what's her name on to this guy. So we're in the home stretch here, but I'd, I'd love, you know, I'm always fascinated by the d dynamic between co hosts and friends. So this is your opportunity to say something nice about the other person. So who wants to go first? Something that's come about that you've learned as a result of this experience you've had working together. Man, let me tell you, I am like, I present as a very extroverted person because I'm loud. And I can craft a joke. But like, I don't like talking to people. I don't like putting things out there. I'll be sitting all the way in the back. I'll throw out quips. I'll be the Statler and Waldorf. But like, I ain't going to be the Kermit. But I need the Kermit. And so I always give props to Mealy. He's just never afraid to ask a question. He's never afraid to put things out there. He is, he is fearless and he is driven. Like I'll be exhausted and I'll get a text from Ailey going like, guess what I just did? I'm like, how? How do you find energy for all of this? And he always, so Mealy's just awesome. Okay. Well, well, thank you. That's that's really sweet. And I'll say to Disco, and he mentioned it earlier on there, is the genuine curiosity. Like, I am I have a curiosity. I'm not saying I'm not curious. But a lot of times I'm just there to have fun and just to cut up and be goofy and do weird stuff. And I'm looking... They're saying something and I'm thinking of like my own anecdote or some joke or some pun I could make out of that. And Tedisco is like, ooh, I really want to know about that. Can you tell me more about that? What if this and how does this work? And how do you, when you encounter this challenge, how do you, st like someone's discussing their philosophy of teaching or a method that they use. And he'll be like, well, what if this happens or why not that? And so he has a really big curiosity and also God bless him for his dedication to editing because I have one point we split it 
and I hate it. I am just, my wife and I are talking about having a podcast and I'm told her, I said, the one thing that makes me afraid of doing it is the editing. So, oh, by the way, you can't steal it. Someone's already done this. I'm, I'm trademarking it right now. It's going to be me and my wife and it's going to be called Instead of Therapy. And so we're just going <laughs> to just, <laughs> oh, yeah. just work out. I love it. Just work out our issues on the podcast. <laughs> the Dirty Laundry Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get hashtag teacher crack. Yes. As well. Yes. Hashtag teacher crack. Yes. Tell your stories. So um, as we wrap up, this is one of the, I ask a couple of questions at the end of each show. So the one is, what is something you've changed your mind about recently? So who'd want to tackle that one first? Okay. I have. I've changed. and it's It's been kind of like a evolution. I care less and less about grades all the time. Okay. When I first came in, I was very much, I remember arguing with my principal because it's what I was raised on that it has to, my classroom should hit that bell curve and there should be, you know, if there's 25 kids, there should be five A's and five F's and, you know, this many B's and this many D's and then a whole bunch of C's in the middle. And I've realized that that's stupid. And all it does, speaking of gatekeeping, is it, it turns me rather into someone who is promoting learning into someone who is being a gatekeeper. And my goal is for kids to grow and to learn and to do all that stuff. And I honestly don't care. If you are making an effort and you're learning in my class, I am much, much more now inclined to just, and it sounds like I'm becoming an easy teacher, but it's really a teacher that just cares more about learning and to give them the B or the A and, you know, not really worry about like why this kid doesn't have a C. And I've also, I've actually done the math as a math teacher and go, you know what? My actual class moves your GPA so little. You know, you take about 32 classes when you are in high school. And so my, I moved the GPA, like I'm in the, like the either, depending on how much, what your GPA was and what, how I, how much higher a grade I give you from what it was, I move it from like a couple tenths to maybe even just only moving like a hundredth of a point. So who cares about that? So why don't I just give you the higher grade? You'll be happy. I'll be happy. And it's less stressful than me trying to determine, is this kid like, ooh, does this kid deserve a B or an A? Who cares? Give them both A's. You know, why are we differentiating between the B and the A kid, right? Let's just give them both A's and move on with it. To disco? I'll say something I changed my mind about recently. I mean, I think recently what, what I've been focusing a lot on is like I just focus more on processes and less on like accomplishments. Like I felt when I was, you know, younger and you know, throughout my twenties, you know, it was, you know, what kind of merit badges could I get in life? You know, uh, what kind of accomplishments can I have or things I could say like, oh, look, I did this checklist. But if you focus on the process, things just kind of take care of themselves. So I, I guess that's that's kind of what I've been working on. Like even in like my hobbies and stuff, I've been getting, Mealy and I both have been getting back into chess and we got to play a game soon. But like, you know, when I was younger, when I was, you know, trying to get into chess, it was really disheartened because I was just focusing on my number and that number does not change. Like, I mean, you'll be practicing for months and months and months and you'll go up maybe like 20 points and it's up to like 2,500. So it's really disheartening. But like, if you just take it one piece at a time and you just keep focusing on processes, whether it's in life or in hobbies or whatever, you know, things just kind of get better. Very cool. I think that applies to podcasting too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice way to bring it back around. I like that. Enjoy just doing the podcast. Because speaking of all things lessons, by the way, we got Tony Danza on, who's not like a, you know, he's not a mega, mega star, but he's like a well known person. You know how much it bumped up our downloads? Negligible. Like a little bit. Some people listened to that episode when they heard about it. You know, it's like some friends and family, like, oh, I'm going to listen to your podcast that I've never listened to before. And guess what? They've never listened again. <laughs> But let me tell you, hold on, I'll share my screen. I did chart how much it boosted our ego. You guys can see it on my screen there. Yeah, that's some exponential growth. Right. Yeah. And sometimes that's why you podcast, because I get like highs, you know, endorphin rushes or whatever it is, like the, the joy that comes from these conversations is so much more fun. Like, And I always joke that I, I want to be Howard Stern, so I go to the studio, record, laugh a lot, and then just leave. And it's like everything else just like magically happens. So it's every podcaster's dream. But I just want to be cognizant of the time. I want to thank you, Mealy, for reaching out. I'm always open for like these conversations because I think it's better 
to have conversations with people who are passionate about their show and are passionate about spreading the word about their show because it just makes more for a much more lively conversation. And a lot of times in lieu of the conferences which aren't happening, I would have met you at a podcasting conference or something like that, or, and we would have had a, a nice a chat at the bar or in the hallway, and I'm like, hey, let's pick this up on the podcast. So that's sort of what's happening. I'm looking forward for that happening again. I don't know if I'll make it to podcast movement this year, but next year, definitely. There's two happening. Podfest is another great one. So hopefully we get to connect it in real life. Yeah, we won't be. They want too much money, and <laughs> Mrs. Mealy is, you know... Barely. This is where you do the fundraiser on the show and you and you get people and you say, hey, but put it out there. I'm going to tell you right now. Those rich teachers just throwing money around. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to challenge you guys. Not this podcast, but next year, it's going to come back to uh, Fort Worth where it started. So 2022, Fort Worth, it's going to be around August. So 2022, start that year long campaign. You'll probably need two, three thousand dollars, I think, for the hotel, the registration. So put it out there. I'm going to hold you guys to it and uh, to, to, to see you there. Neely, here's the campaign. We're going to MC it. They'll comp us. Yes. We'll see what, honestly, I'm not poo-pooing the, the podcast movement, but probably what would benefit us more would be to go to big teacher conferences. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Where there's going to be like thousands of teachers there where we Yeah, you should do that. So. Yeah. That's what I do want to do and get there and try and make those connections both for guests and listeners, I think would be really good. Good. You get it and I'll build the PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm going to say, I've got a... The cool thing is to the community, I have a, the people that were on the, the big streaming thing that we have, I mean, I think it's like 11 or 12 education podcasters that were on a, a Twitter group DM. And I just kind of found them through Twitter. And so we just talk podcasting and teaching in that. I really encourage you, whoever you are, find your community of other people that podcast about similar things or for or other podcasts or whatever you can do, find a community because it, it's so, so helpful and it creates it makes it so much more fun and also when you have that horrible thing and that happened to your recording or whatever and you go and share they can go I, I, me too you know commiserate <laughs> commiserate so where's the best place for folks to learn more about the show and to connect with you online so if you just search unprofessional development especially unprofessional development podcast or unprofessional development dancer, then you will uh, find us. And then on Twitter, I have an Instagram. I don't ever hardly use it, but unprocast on Twitter. I'm there every day, pretty much. So I'm really easy to find. And if you follow me, I follow you back and I'll interact with you. And if you know some funny teachers, if you know some great teachers, we are always looking because yeah, that's the other thing. Everyone knows a teacher. So if you know a teacher, hit us up and say, hey, I think this guy would... If you know LeVar Burton or Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Dana McKellar. Dana McKellar. You know, we need um, Wonder Years, for those of you that don't know her, by her, her regular She's name. a teacher now? She has, she's she does homeschooling and she has okay. like four or five math books. Like she's like... Kind of like, um, what's her name? Maya Miam Dalkalum from Maya Angelou? <laughs> the neurologist from Big Bang Theory. Sheldon's girlfriend. She's like a real neurologist. So okay, don't know that one. Da anyway, Danica McKellar is a real academic person. She went to, she went to, I think, I'm sure, to Stanford or UCLA or somewhere like that. And is like a stinking genius. It's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get her. And then you can tag me on Twitter and you're like, we just got Danica. <laughs> so. I will. I will. All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much, I have all those links Thank in the you. show notes. I really appreciate you guys uh, reaching out. Yes. Appreciate it. We enjoyed it. It was a good time. All right. Thanks again to Million to Disco. Love the banter between those two guys. Really had a fun time with this conversation. And it was fun having them tell their story about Tony Danza, someone that I'm very familiar with growing up as a child in the 80s. Full show notes available at podcastjunkies.com forward slash 271. Thanks to our sponsors, Focus Right. Don't forget to check out their awesome line of gear, specifically the Scarlet 2i2 Pro at podcastjunkies.com forward slash focus right. And Patreon, you're putting everything into making your podcast perfect, and now you want to know how to keep it that way. What's wonderful is that on Patreon, people power your podcast, not networks or advertisers, so you can turn down those crappy ad deals and stay in creative control. Start your Patreon today at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Podcast production marketing provided by Fullcast. Sign up for a free podcast brainstorm at fullcast.co forward slash chat 15. Tune in next week for my wonderful conversation with Corina Belizzi, host of Care More, Be Better. This is a really, really heart opening, inspiring conversation. Corina and I connected on LinkedIn. I 
give her some feedback on the show she was just starting and challenge her to reach back out when she had reached 20 episodes, which she did. And that's why we had this conversation. So that's going to be a really fun one for you to check out. If you've made it this far, you're no doubt listening for this retention hashtag that I mentioned. You can tag Mealy and Tedisco at unprocast, U-N-P-R-O-C-A-S-T, and podcast underscore junkies. Let us know you made it this far. Thanks for all you do to support the show. Love you, gals and guys. Talk to you next episode. <laughs>